morning, everybody, and welcome to our service at Northwest Barrie United Church. It is Sunday, February the 13th, and dare I say it, this is our last online-only service. So I hope maybe our last online ever, but uh, we'll see where this goes. But for now, um, this is our last Sunday of doing this, and then uh, next Sunday we're back to uh, in-person services and uh, live streaming. So very exciting. I just, uh, we always begin with our celebrations. I just have one birthday to announce and I uh, want to say very happy birthday to Alex Estevez who is celebrating tomorrow on uh, Valentine's Day. So happy birthday to Alex. And if anybody can get out of him how old he is, good for you because he, he just won't share. Um, so happy birthday to uh, Alex. And if you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, milestone, I hope you had a good uh, celebration. Just a couple of announcements. Last week I mentioned that we had our annual meeting and at that meeting we said goodbye to Barb Siwi who is uh, retiring after her four year stint as the chair of our board. And uh, I said this week I would announce uh, who our new uh, board chair is going to be. So pleased to announce that uh, the new chair of our board is going to be Ashley Arnold. Um, if you don't recognize Ashley by her name, I'm almost sure you would recognize uh, her by her face. Uh, Ashley's been around this church for a long time, uh, helped out in a variety of ways, um, most recently served on our stewardship team. But you probably know her uh, as our office administrator, which uh, she was in that position for about a year and a half before COVID. So Ashley brings a wealth of knowledge from the church and also from the community. So we're very pleased uh, to have her uh, taking that role and we, we thank her for, for putting her name forward to do so. The only other announcement I have is regarding opening the church. Uh, again, that would start uh, next week. So just as we did before on uh, Tuesday, I'm going to send out the link to sign up uh, via Northwest, Northwest News. Uh, we're going to be opening at 50% capacity and then hopefully building from there. Uh, and same protocols as before, uh, masks and, and so forth. And we do require you to be vaccinated to come to, uh, to, come to church. So we hope that you'll join us uh, starting next week. And we're really, really excited to get back to, uh, to in-person services. So let me begin now our service with our call to worship. There's a moment each and every day when we open our eyes and catch our bearings, survey the day and ask ourselves, what will this day bring? And ahead of us is an opportunity to make the day our own. What will this day bring? What opportunities will arise? What tasks or chores may be completed? What passing moments to make a difference may appear? What blessings can enrich this day? What may bring laughter and light to this day? So here is the day. Here is your day. Let's make the most of it. Our opening hymn, uh, based on our theme today, which is laughter, is uh, Give to Us Laughter. Give to us laughter, O source of our life. Laughter can banish so much of our strife. Laughter and love give us wholeness and hell. Laughter and love are the coin of true wealth. Give to us laughter as sign of deep joy. and with bright northern light. 
Please join me now in our opening prayer and let us pray. God, today in this worship time, we celebrate the gift of laughter. It may seem like a time when we should refrain from laughing. As we know, there are serious things going on in our world and in our country and communities. It may seem like to laugh is an affront to the tears and the fears that so many are feeling these days. Or could it be that this is exactly the time we need to laugh? To be reminded that life can still put a smile on our face. Laughter can be healing. It can heal the brokenness we feel. And sometimes it can even heal the brokenness around us. So today, as we think about laughter, keep our spirits light. And keep our eyes open to the things that can still make us smile and feel good to be alive. May this time be a gift. And may we be glad that it has brought us into worship. Into the presence of you, who is light and love and laughter. Amen. I'm not sure what our special music is today, but I know Amanda said it's, it's on the theme of, of laughter as well. So uh, I, I know that you will enjoy it. When, of course, uh, we would normally take up the offering. And uh, again, we are talking about uh, the gift of laughter today, so I just want to share a little um, funny story. Uh, many years ago, in a former church that I was in, we had a, a gentleman who started coming to the church, and he'd never been to a church before. And he, he came to me, and he said that he'd like to make a financial contribution to the church kind of on a regular basis. And he said that a friend of his had said, well, um, you can tithe. And so he he um, asked me what a, a tithe was and how much that was. So I said, well, if you read the Bible, it says that it's 10% of what you have. So I remember there was a big pause, and he said to me, well, he said, I, I used to drink beer, and that was 5%, and then I moved to light beer because my doctor said it was better for me. So he said, I'll tell you what. Can't do 10%, but can I tithe light? Let's go for 2%. And I never, I never forgot that. You know, we never require anyone to give a certain amount here at Northwest. We just invite people to give what they are able to give. 
And for some, that's a lot, and for some, that's a little, but all of it is of great value, and it's all very much appreciated. So, whether you tithe large or whether you tithe light, we are grateful for your ongoing support of our church. The Bible lesson today I'd like to share is uh, taken from the book of Genesis, and it's the story of Abraham and, and Sarah. The Lord appeared to Abraham as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. God came to him in the form of three travelers. When Abraham saw the travelers, he rushed to greet them, and he said, My Lord, please stay a while. I will bring you water to wash your feet and, and bread and wine that you might refresh yourselves. So they said, Yes, we will stay. Abraham hastened into his tent to his wife Sarah, and he said to her, Please make bread for these travelers. When the food had been prepared, he set it before the travelers and stood by them while they ate. They then said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And Abraham answered, She's in the tent. Well, said the travelers, We have a message for her. Your wife, Sarah, is going to give birth to a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation in the tent. Now Abraham and Sarah were very advanced in years, and Sarah was long past the age at which she could have a child. So Sarah laughed when she heard the news, saying to herself, I am old and my husband is old. How on earth can we have a baby? God heard Sarah and said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say she could not have a baby? Is nothing impossible for God? Amen. This morning, I'm continuing with the, the series we're doing this month called Leaving a Trail. And we're looking at some famous people that have passed away over the last year and drawing from them some of the wisdom that they lived in their life. Uh, last week, we looked at Desmond Tutu. And uh, again, through, through Northwest News and, and through the service last week, I gave people a, a contest. So I didn't tell anybody what the five famous people are going to be. But I did give you a hint each week, and I, I suggested that perhaps uh, you could try and guess who they are. So thank you to everyone who sent in their guesses. Nobody has come up with all five yet, um, but a couple people have come up with four. So I'm filming this on Thursday, and I'm hoping by, by Sunday um, somebody may have come up with that, uh, that elusive fifth person. But so far, the best we've done is, uh, is four out of five, which is, which is still really good. So today we're looking at the second in the series, and I'm calling it uh, Give to Us Laughter. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our light. Amen. Give to us laughter, O source of our life. Laughter can banish so much of our strife. Laughter and love give us wholeness and health. Laughter and love are the coin of true wealth. That's a great modern-day hymn that we sang this morning from Voices United, and it's absolutely 100% true. Laughter and love are the coin of true wealth. We shouldn't have to ever live without either. What do you think of laughter? Do you like to laugh? Well, I certainly do. And I hope if there's one thing that I've modeled over 25 years of ministry and 25 years of sharing some pretty bad jokes from this and other pulpits is that laughter really has a place in life, a big place. If we're not laughing at ourselves or laughing at life's ironies or just laughing at the outrageousness of some things, then I think we're missing something. If God didn't want us to laugh, what is the duckbill platypus all about? Not only is it fun to laugh, but we also know it's healthy to laugh. It can relieve, release stress, ease tension. It can send those good and healing hormones flowing through our bodies, and it can relax tired minds and weary spirits. How many of us at the end of a long day like to come home and put on the TV or Netflix and just watch something funny and just take our minds off life? I've shared this thought before, but somebody once pointed out 
that many people today would much rather go and listen to a comedian than they would go to church and listen to a preacher. And that's true. You don't see people at a comedy show with their arms crossed looking at their watch wondering when it's going to be over. Why do people like to listen to comedians? Well, firstly, because people like to laugh. But secondly, many comedians, like preachers, talk about life. But instead of using the language of faith, they talk about everyday situations in life. Instead of solemn prayers, they evoke laughter. In their own way, a good comedian, like a good preacher, gives people perspective on life, points out some of the ironies of life, and can make people feel better about themselves and to put aside some of their worries and fears, if only for a bit. A, com a comedian knows, and a good preacher should know, that laughter is an important part of life, and laughter is an important part of faith. So, did you hear the one about the claustrophobic astronaut? He really needed some space. Anyway, I could do better than that. Guy walks into a bar with a giraffe. After a few drinks, the giraffe passes out cold on the floor. The man starts to leave and the bartender yells out, Hey, you can't leave that lion there. Guy looks back and he says, That's not a lion, it's a giraffe. <laughs> this is what I need the choir behind me to, to really get that laughter going. <laughs> so anyway... All this is to lead in to the person that I want to talk about this morning. We recently lost someone who knew only too well about the power of laughter. This woman was many things. She was a philanthropist. She was an environmentalist. She was an actress. But she thought of herself, first and foremost, as a comedian. She was born way back on January 17th, 1922 and passed away just shy of her 100th birthday. You may remember her as the passive-aggressive Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary Tyler Moore show, or the kind-hearted but slightly dim Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls. She was called the First Lady of American Television. And in her career that spanned almost 75 years, she won eight Emmy Awards and was inducted in 1995 into the Television Hall of Fame. Just in case you still haven't figured out who she is, and I'm sure you have, let me put up her picture. It is, of course, Betty White. And she was certainly very funny. Let me share a few of her famous quotes. I'll put them up on the screen. Get at least eight hours of beauty sleep. Nine if you're ugly. My mother used to say, the older you get, the better you get, unless you're a banana. Or how about this one? Women are like butterflies. We may look pretty and delicate, but baby, we can fly through a hurricane. And I love this last one. She said this. People say, but Betty, Facebook is a great way to connect with old friends. Well, at my age, if I want to connect with old friends, I need a Ouija board. Betty White made us laugh, but she did so more, much more than that. She inspired people to live well, to, to be healthy, to embrace the moment, to be enthusiastic, to stretch yourself, and to live with gratitude, and to be passionate about life. And that's what I want to get to today. You know, this series is about leaving a trail. Betty White left a trail that went well beyond her jokes. And one of the gifts she gave to the world was simply the gift of her longevity. Not too many people get to be 99 years old, let alone still have that clarity to be fully engaged with life. In a modern Western culture that tends to celebrate youthfulness, Betty White showed us that age can also bring its own gifts. Just because we've reached a certain age, we don't have to lock up the store and leave a closed sign on the front door. We can still live. Her longevity was a gift. And I think when people have been around that long, we should listen to what they have to teach us and tell us about life. 
And that's why I chose as the biblical reference for today that uh, the Old Testament character of Sarah. As you heard from the reading, when God told Sarah that she would have a baby in her old age, what did Sarah do? She laughed. She laughed at the outrageousness of that idea. But then what did God say in return to Sarah? Why are you laughing? Is nothing impossible to God? And nine months later, Isaac was born. As a symbol, Sarah reminds us that even in advanced age, life doesn't have to stop. But God can still find a way to bring life in us and through us. Is it a stretch to think of Betty White as kind of like a modern-day Sarah? Betty White modeled for us that life, laughter, and goodness of spirit isn't just the way of youth. It can also be the gift of age. And maybe, just maybe, if we pause on our youthful endeavors and listen to the wisdom of those who have been around that long, we can learn a little bit more about our lives. So let's do that. Let's learn from this wise and witty and wonderful woman a little more of the trail that she left behind. So I want to share with you today the five lessons of Betty White. These are simple, basic, hopefully they will give you pause to think about how these play out or maybe don't play out in your own life. So here we go. Number one, attitude is everything. Betty White once said, do you know what the biggest waste of time is? Complaining. She didn't do it, and she didn't like to be around people who did it. One of the things that made Betty White such an attractive person was that she had a great attitude. And she was so good at laughing at herself and she never took life too seriously. For example, when she was asked why she kept in good health, she said it's because she lived in a two-story house and had a bad memory. So she was going up and down the stairs all the time getting things, and it kept her in good health. But that was her. She could laugh at life. I'm sure that's one of the things that led to her longevity. And she really disliked being around negative people. She used to say that anger tears her up inside and she would avoid angry people at all costs. That's not to say that her life was perfect or without tragedy. She had her challenges. She lost a lot of loved ones, as we do when we live to be 99. But even then, she had such a great perspective. She cautioned people who had lost loved ones to avoid being what she called a professional mourner. She said, miss the people you have loved, cry when you need to, but also feel grateful for the time that you shared with them and keep their legacy alive by not giving up on your own life. Find ways to move forward. Betty White showed us that attitude is everything. Secondly, the second lesson of Betty White, stand up for others. In the late 1950s, Betty White was given her own variety show. It was called The Betty White Show. It featured talented people from across the country. She had a dancer on the show whose name was Arthur Duncan. He was a tap dancer, and he was also black. Remember, this was the 50s, prior to the Civil Rights Movement. And the idea of a black dancer on a white show angered many people particularly those in the southern states. And so those in power, from politicians to religious leaders, called for a boycott of the show. ABC felt the pressure and worried about losing viewers and losing revenue. And so they quietly pulled Betty White aside one day and suggested that she drop Arthur Duncan from her show. Betty White who, if you remember I said, didn't like anger, nevertheless was said to have been thrown into a rage. And she said to the executives, I'm sorry, but he stays. Live with it. And then went on to book him even more on the show. It was an incredible act of bravery 
at a time when the country was so divided on race. The Betty White Show was actually canceled soon after that for a variety of reasons. But Arthur Duncan went on to become a well-known celebrity in his own right. And he credited his success to Betty White, who would not give up on him despite tremendous pressure. Stand up for others. Number three, be passionate about something. You may or may not know this fact about Betty White, but she never wanted to be a comedian or an actor. She wanted to be a forest ranger. It was the only thing she ever wanted to be. But of course, that was the 40s, and women just weren't allowed to become forest rangers. But she never lost that passion. And in 2010, she was given an honorary forest ranger degree, so she could call herself a forest ranger. But it was that word passion that defined so much of her life. She always believed that everyone should be passionate about something. In fact, here's what she said, and I'm going to put this on the screen too. I think everyone needs a passion. Whether it's one passion or a hundred, that's what keeps life interesting. If you live without passion, you can go through life without leaving any footprints. Now, although you may not have known about the forest ranger fact, you probably do know that her other passion was animals. She gave a huge amount of time and treasure towards working on animal causes. She loved animals, and promoting and protecting them became her passion. She once said, animals don't lie, animals don't criticize. If animals have moody days, they handle them better than humans. But she's right. We all need something to be passionate about. Something to fire us up and, and get our blood flowing every day. And often, it's those passions that we have in life, that's the legacy that we end up leaving behind. Because when we are passionate, we make others passionate. And that's when we leave a trail. That's when we leave our own footprints. What are you passionate about? What are you doing about it? Or maybe you haven't found yours yet but it isn't too late. And that brings me to the fourth point. Remember, age is just a number. You know, I've already said this, but really one of the great uh, legacies that Betty left behind was simply her long life. We are not all gifted with the longevity of days, but we are all gifted with the ability to choose how we fill them. Betty May White made the decision that age would not dim her enthusiasm for life, her enthusiasm for people, her enthusiasm to make a mark. Think about this. Her first really big break on television came with the Mary Tyler Moore Show, a role that she got when she was older than 50. Let's go back to Sarah in the Bible. When Sarah laughed at God, it wasn't a gleeful laugh or a happy laugh. It was a mocking, cynical laugh. She was mocking God for the suggestion that she would have a baby at the age she was at. And probably we would do the same. But again, if we use this story as a symbol or a metaphor, Sarah represented that thinking that beyond a certain age, we become ineffective. Or that at some point, we stop being productive. And we laugh mockingly at the suggestion that good things can still happen to us or from us. But Betty White refused to let her number of her age diminish her. In fact, as we all knew, she only grew in popularity as she got older. Think about this. Betty White was over 90 years old when she appeared in a Snickers commercial. I'm sure many of you have seen it. It's a great commercial. And in the commercial, she is put in a football uniform and is tackled by a group of very large football players. Now, she used a stunt double for the actual tackle, but nevertheless, she had to wallow around in mud for hours while it was being filmed. And she was over 90. Now, I get that she's an exception. But the point of that story is that when she was asked to do this, 
She never wavered. She didn't say, I'm too tired or I'm too frail. She got on a plane, flew across the country, and made that commercial. She saw it as an opportunity, an adventure, a way to continue to feel alive. She never mocked. She never said, I'm too old. But rather, she said, I'm going for it. Now, I know I have to be careful on this point because I'm 53, I'm not 93. And I don't know what it feels like to be 93. And I know there are people watching today who know exactly what it feels like to be 93. All I'm suggesting is that life is always an opportunity and an adventure if we choose to see it that way. And just as God wasn't finished with Sarah just because she was a certain age, surely God isn't finished with any of us either. Hopefully, there is still that willingness to be open to the possibilities of life and how that spirit can work through us, whatever age or stage we may be at. We just have to be willing to say, I'm going for it. Whether we're 53 or 93, I'm going for it. Number five, last point, live slowly and be grateful. Betty White lived the last two years of her life the way that the rest of us have lived the last two years of our life, under a pandemic. Her life went from jetting around the country to basically sitting in her living room doing crossword puzzles, which she actually did each and every day for the last two years. She did crossword puzzles because she said it kept her mind active. In one of her final interviews, Betty White was asked what she thought of the pandemic. She said, well, it's horrible. But she also said, perhaps it has taught us something. Horrible, because of how it has ravaged human life, devastated families and communities. But she also said that with any luck, it's also taught us all to go a little slower in life, to not be in such a hurry, but rather to slow down, enjoy the people we love, and be grateful for the things that we have. Those words were proved to be the last words that Betty White would publicly speak. Her final words to a world that had watched and admired her humor, her grit, her tenacity, her energy, her enthusiasm for life. Her final words were soothing words, words of calm and peace. A comedian knows that it's all about timing and her final words were all about timing. Go slowly, enjoy the people you love and be grateful for the things you have and the time you have. So, the five lessons of Betty White. Let me list them again. Number one, attitude is everything. Number two, stand up for others. Number three, be passionate. Number four, remember age is just a number. Number five, live slowly and be grateful. Let me end with this. Sometimes the enormity of life, particularly a life that's been around for 99 years, can sometimes be captured in a single moment or event or story. One of Betty White's co-stars on The Golden Girls recalled a time when Betty White was two hours late for the rehearsal. This was unlike her, as she was fastidious about being on time and never wanted to keep anyone waiting. This was before cell phones, so nobody could get in touch with her. She finally arrived on the set and apologized profusely for being late, but offered no explanation. It wasn't until months later that the story got out. 
She'd been in her car driving to the studio when she came across two golden retrievers who had wandered onto the highway. She stopped a car at the side of the road and then bravely, or maybe recklessly, held up her hands and stopped the flow of traffic. Gently, she coaxed the two golden retrievers into her car, drove them to an animal shelter, and waited with them until the dog's owners were found and they had been reunited and they were safe. Some moments say a lot about a life. The trail that Betty White left behind us, left behind for us is significant. She made us laugh, but she did so much more than that. She reminds us that we should be passionate about our lives. We should be passionate about those we share our lives with, whether they're two legs or on four legs. Like Sarah of old, she was given the gift of a long life. And like Sarah of old, age didn't stop her from being a source of life and inspiration to others. She lived large, and she left a trail characterized by three things that we could all use very badly these days. Laughter, love, and light. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great week ahead. I'd like to end today with a benediction that is actually an Irish toast, but I think it applies to what we've shared today. I'll put the words up on the screen. May you always have walls for the wind, a roof for the rain, tea beside the fire, laughter to cheer you, those you love near you, and all your heart may desire. Amen.